Yes, welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of Gaming Explained here on the Sound Strategy Network. I am Bridger, I'll be your educator for this evening. Those of you who are paying attention may have noticed the amazing Company of Heroes music playing in the background here. Love that game. Fantastic World War II game. Gotta recommend it. Company of Heroes 2 coming out soon. But today we're working on a very different game. A very different game. Although it is also of World War II, it's time to present to you Combat Commander. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Combat Commander Europe. What the hell is this? It's a board game. But we're gonna show it to you here and teach you how to play. And maybe after that we'll convince you to spend 60 bucks and buy it. We'll find out. But it's absolutely one of my favorite uh, war games that exist for many different reasons, not least of which is its accessibility and extreme ease of learning. So we're going to show that off today, and joining me as the person learning and then pointing out all of the things that I have forgotten to teach, Kuro. Welcome, sir. Hello. All hey, right. Everybody. So, Kuro has not looked at the rules at all on this. He is completely coming into this blind, and so I am going to be able to steamroll him. It's going to be great. No, no. I'm going to give him tips. So, we're going to be playing Combat Commander Europe, which is a squad-level, tactical, card-driven, turn-based strategy game. Uh, each hex in the game is about 100 feet wide. It's actually about 30 meters. And you'll com command anywhere between 30 and 110 men. Uh, cards... Uh, in your hand, sort of determine the things that you can do. So it's a card management game with a lot of variable objectives and a random scenario generator, which is really cool, but it's also got a lot of historical scenarios, which are still coming out years and years after it's published. They've been putting out scenario packs with new maps, new units, new items. It's really, really massively replayable. Each side has its own fate deck. So the Soviets have a deck, the Germans have a deck, the Americans have a deck, the British have a deck, the Japanese have a deck, the Italians have a deck, the the British in the Japanese theater have a deck, and the Americans in the Japanese theater have a deck. They all have their own decks which play differently, which again adds to the massive replayability of this game. Uh, so let me explain exactly what we're talking about here. Uh, there's a lot of different nuances to it. I'm going to go over the high-level stuff for you very quickly here, and then we're going to jump in and actually learn how to play the game with a live demonstration. So just bear with me for five minutes while we go through this, or if you're watching this on YouTube, just click the button down below to cut straight to the demonstration. But here's how the game works. It'll end in only one of two ways. When one side loses a number of units equal to their surrender limit, in the map we're about to play, the scenario we're about to play, the surrender limit for the Soviets is 7, and for the Germans it's 5. So if the Germans lose their 5th counter, their 5th unit off of the board, they lose instantly. If the Soviets lose their 7th unit off of the board, boom, they lose instantly. That's a, that's a generalization. There are exceptions to probably everything I'm going to say here because I'm overgeneralizing. So... The other way to lose, or to end the game rather, is with a sudden death roll being successful. And we'll talk more about that and how the time track works later on. But basically, when it, we get to a certain point in the game, we're going to roll the dice to see if the game ends. If it does end, then we calculate victory points after revealing secret objectives and we see who wins. Uh, and now, how do you get victory points? Well, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. Killing enemy units is the first and most important, most fun way to get victory points. Absolutely. You kill a squad, that's two victory points. A team is only one victory point, and a leader is worth one plus a variable based on how good they are. The better leaders are worth more points if you kill them. Now, you also get victory points if you can get your units to exit off the enemy side of the map. Basically, it means you've broken through their defenses, and now you're make, causing havoc in the rear line. You're hitting their supplies, you're hitting their munitions dumps, you're hitting their command and control centers, and that's terrible for them. So you get victory points as a result. Now, don't worry, because the units that you exit off the map will return on the next time phase that will basically count as reinforcements. For all intents and purposes, you radio back to HQ and you say, Hey, Captain, we managed to push all the way through over here. We're going to need some more forces. we got a breach. Send them on over. So the forces coming back are, not, are, are symbolically new, even if they are the exact same counters that you used before. So you also uh, earn the same amount of VP equal to the type that you just saw at the top there. Two for a squad, one for a team, and a variable not for a leader. Now... 
the last and probably most important way uh, that you can gain victory points is by holding the objective locations on the map. There are five objective locations on each map, and they will be worth between zero and ten victory points. Usually it's between zero and five. There's only one objective that can be worth ten, and if it is worth ten, everybody knows it. But there are secret objectives. Sometimes I will know that objective number three is actually worth two points, and sometimes Kuro will know that objective number uh, one, two, three, four, and five are each worth one bonus point in addition to everything else. And those secret ones are only revealed at the end of the game. So I might know that I am winning, and then Kuro reveals a secret objective that leads me to be, no! I was losing the whole time. So as a result, you need to pay attention to and try and grab all of the objectives because they're all important to that dis- degree. So next up, we've got uh, the sequence of play. This is this is how the game plays. I take a turn, Kuro takes a turn. Then I take a turn, then Kuro takes a turn. And we keep doing that until the game ends. On your turn, you're going to play cards from your hand and resolve them. When you're finished, you drop to your hand limit and that's the game. It's very simple from an explanatory standpoint, but you can see the interactions, just like chess, can make things very interesting and fun to play. Now, in addition to being played as order cards from your hand, your cards also have actions listed, which are like instants in magic. You can play actions basically as an interrupt. So maybe my opponent's going to try to fire at my units, but I can play camouflage in the middle of his fire attack and say, actually, my guys have more cover than you thought they did. And bam, now I just played an interrupt to stop his action and do something good for me. So that's the kind of thing that can happen. The cards themselves will state when you are allowed to interrupt play and play those specific cards. You can also always skip your turn in order to discard a number of cards from your hand and draw up to your hand limit. So you say, I I gotta get rid of this crap from my hand, so I'm gonna take a turn, not do anything, and instead just basically refresh my hand. So Here's what you're going to be looking at. These are the units in the game. All right, so you've got rifle companies. Uh, you've got line. Uh, in this example, we've got a rifle squad, a line team, and Sergeant Gans, who is a leader. So you'll see the squads have uh, four silhouette troops. The teams have two, and the leaders have one. That's how you can tell the difference. Now you'll also see that it has uh, two sides. The front side is the left-hand ones you see there. The right-hand side with the red stripe, that's a broken squad. That means the squad is operating or team or leader is operating at a lower capacity they are you know not able to fight as well they can't move as far maybe it means that the sergeant got hit in the leg and so people are helping him move and so they're not able to fire their weapons as effectively maybe it means their heads are all just stuck behind cover it's it's there's a lot of different interpretations to what broken actually means but it, in all intents purposes they're, 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 they're not operating at full capacity at the very bottom there you can see that we've also got an example of a weapon which can be equipped onto squads, teams, and leaders, and the weapon uh, has its own firepower range and movement, and it can also break as well. So on the right-hand side, you can see a very quick demonstration of what the different numbers mean. The, the command value inside the hex is something you'll only see on the leaders. The morale in the top right is essentially the defense of the unit. How strong are they? How veteran are they? How, uh, how much punishment can they take before they give up and just keep their head ducked down? for example. So uh, then you've got firepower on the opposite corner, and that dictates how much power of the fire they can actually spit out at their enemy. The range indicates how many hexes away they can shoot, and the movement indicates how many movement points they have. So with that having been said, let's go very quickly over the different orders that are available in the game uh, on the cards, and then we'll jump in and actually play. So the first thing to know is you can always pass instead of playing your orders and discard a number of cards and then fill your hand up and just give your opponent the chance to go. This is something you might do if, for example, you you really want to find a concentration of fire and move cards so that you can execute a sort of lightning blitz maneuver. If you think about this from a perspective of what's actually happening in the World War II battlefield, this is Captain Winters going around to all the troops and say, first on the left, second from the left, third from the right. 
guy. You know, he's giving everybody the exact orders. He's taking the time to do exactly what needs to be done. And you are Captain Winters, by the way. You are the captain level of this uh, in this game. You're commanding between the 30 and 100 men. So you are Captain Winters. If you've seen Band of Brothers, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Fantastic series. Anyway, moving is the first thing you can do. You activate one unit to move using its movement points. It costs a certain amount of movement points to enter a hex based on the terrain. We'll get to that later. The stagging limit of a single hex is seven fig figures. If you recall, the different uh, types of units have different number of silhouettes on them. So seven is the stacking limit, which means you can have a rifle, a team, sorry, a squad, a team, and a leader in a single hex. That is the maximum you can have. You can never have two squads, because if that ever happens, you have to basically destroy one. Uh, so you do not want to let that happen, if at all possible. You can have three line squads and, a, or sorry, three line, three teams and a leader, if you would so choose. That is also legal, because that equals seven. Or you could have just a squad and a leader, or just a couple uh, teams and a leader. So that is all legal. So, uh, the last thing that you should know about a move action is it makes you vulnerable to, fi to an opportunity fire. Basically, if you're running across a field, the other guys that are watching that field are probably going to shoot at you. Because when you're running across a field, that is the point at which you are most vulnerable. Instead of, of course, hiding behind some trees, for example. So moving is something that is uh, can be very deadly if you don't do it properly, like proper fire and maneuver. If you can suppress the enemy and then maneuver, you are going to be much safer than if you maneuver before trying to suppress them. Okay, so movement action is there. Movement order is your first order that you can do. Fire is another order you can do, and it's very simple. You activate a unit to fire. If you have a bunch of units that are activated to fire, they can work together to fire at a single target. Uh, you choose a single hex as long as everybody has a line of sight. Boom, they're all firing. So, the way that this works, if uh, the attack total is greater than the defense total, your fire attack is successful, and you break the enemy. They flip over to their broken side. If you recall the red stripe on the previous screen, that means that they're broken. If you break an already broken unit, they're eliminated. They're gone from the map. So that's how uh, you kill off enemy units. Now... Your attack total is equal to the base firepower that's printed on the unit. If there's extra supporting units, you add one for each of those, and then you add a dice roll. 2d6. Bam. Just like that. Defense total is morale, which is that defense number in the top right of the unit. You take that, add the cover value of the hex they're in, and add a d 2d6, and there you get the total. So we're going to go over all of this, and I'll show examples as we actually get into the game, but let's just continue on. You can ignore artillery request, artillery denied, and conf command confusion cards for your first game. Those do nothing. Actually, Command Confusion does nothing always. It's a measure of sort of basically making chaos into your hand. Uh, you can't just always do everything you want to do. And uh, the last slide that we have here, Advance, is an alternative to a movement order. Movement order, you can move a bunch of different uh, spaces based on the movement points that your units have. So they can run several hexes usually. Advance only moves one hex. You can't move more than one hex, but you get to ignore movement point requirements. So even a unit that is broken and only has one movement point left and it's trying to move into a house, which normally costs two to move into, it can always advance into that house. You can always advance that one hex. And you're not vulnerable to opportunity fire, because instead of running several hundred feet, you're crawling for just, you know, a few tens of meters in order to, uh, you know, get to the location. So you're being very careful about moving, meaning you're not opening yourself up to opportunity fire. It's also the only way to enter melee combat. The last two orders that you should know about is recover and route. You're going to use these to get your units from a broken state back into a normal active state or to force your enemies' broken units to route off the map in the opposite direction. That counts as eliminating them for all those purposes. Well, you... All right, so next step on the list is actually get started. Uh, so right. hold on one second. All right, so let's get started, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that all having been said, it is time to actually show you the game in question. Here we are. All this, and we haven't even been able to actually show you the game. But here's the game in question. Uh, and I'm just going to quickly show you around the interface. There's a bunch of buttons up here. There's a chat room here. That's all there is. Kuro, are you still with me? 
Yes, sir. Okay, I'm not lost yet. I'm, I'm going as fast as I can because I know just talking about rules is not the most fun thing in the world. I know that because I've taught games a lot and everybody keeps falling asleep, and so I'm trying not to be detailed. So, here's what we're going to do. Uh, if we open up the correct tab, there we go. Do you see the uh, the wrench and screwdriver button at the top, sort of in the middle of the screen there? Yes, I do. Okay, so here's the way this is going to work. You see the two road, uh, the hexes on the bottom of the map that have roads in them. Uh, They're sort yep. of moving off the map. It would be G10 yep. and N10. So you yep. are allowed to place your units in those hexes, and I am allowed to place my units in the two road hexes on the top of the map. So you can place them however you want. Let me see if it'll let me move them around here. But so you could, no for example... You could, for example, uh, do this. You could put a, a one adjacent hex to that as well. And uh, uh, then you could put a leader in there, and you could give this guy a machine gun. So that's just an example, and then put another leader over here. That's an example. You can move it around however you want, but you can put it in that hex or in the hexes that are adjacent to it. Uh, now, the other thing to consider is where the objectives are in this map. The red numbered dots that you see on the screen are the objectives. And we are going to draw some objectives right now before we actually set up everything before we get going. So let me pull open the playbook right now and I'll tell you how many objectives we draw. I have a feeling it's one, one, and one. It is in fact one, one, and one. So here's the deal. We're gonna draw one objective and put it in the open spot. Here it is. Uh, so, can you see that at the bottom of the screen there? Yep. Objective 5 is worth one victory point to whoever controls it. Now, yep. I am going to draw one onto my side, and you are going to draw one onto your side, and these are objectives that only we can see. So only I know that object... Ah, oh, no, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so there are other ways for objectives to come onto the board as well through events and random things happening. And there are also ways for objectives to become revealed. Okay, so let me make sure I covered all of my bases here. We've got the setup. We've got objective control. Now, nobody is the attacker or defender on this map because of the way the scenario is set up. Instead of there being an attacker and a defender, we have uh, both of us are in what's called recon posture, meaning we both get five cards and neither of us start with any objectives on the board. Uh, and let me make sure that we set up uh, inner adjacent to. Yep, okay, so that's correct. I'm going to set up my units at the top of the screen here, and then we will get started with the actual moving and play. So I'm uh, going to put... Really yes. quick, how do I disconnect the uh, light machine gun from my unit? Double click on the, uh, on the stack is what you're looking right. for, and that will allow them to sort of separate out. So we're going to put that here along with a leader... We're going to put him here. We'll put this guy there. Hmm. We'll give them a medium machine gun. And uh, let's see. We can... Status functions, huh? There's some stuff changed since the last time I played here. But anyway, so that's that. Um, what else do we want to do? Oh, it's automatically assigning the gun. That's kind of cool. Okay, happy about that. So, what else do we want to do? This unit needs to move fast, so we'll give them the light gun. We'll put one squad over there, then the rest are going to go over here. And these guys can have a machine gun too, I think. Huh. What else do we do? We put the last guy where? We got to put all the tons and tons of crazy... I can't even put them over there, actually. I have to put them as a stack over here. I don't have a choice. I have to set up on these locations. Okay. So you're set up, I'm set up, yes? Yep. Okay. So, now we get started. There aren't any naval. <laughs> Pirates asking if there are any naval. No naval in this. It actually doesn't even have tanks. It's infantry only. Although the designer of this also made a system that incorporates tanks. The problem is that this map is not big enough to represent tanks. A tank has the range of like four of these maps put together in real life. So if you're trying to make it realistic, it doesn't quite work that way. So, um, Amino hit. I'm going to take the first turn unless you want to pass the initiative card to me. If you can see on the right-hand side there, there's a little card that says initiative. It's got a hand grenade on it. What that card lets you do is force a re-roll of a dice. 
And so, for example, if all you need is less than an 11 in order to successfully get a hit, but you roll a 12, you can be like, screw that. What are the chances of that happening again? Pass me the initiative card and then re-roll the attack or the or whatever the dice roll was. And that allows you to sort of minimize luck to some degree. The card itself minimizes luck. It's also worth one victory point to whoever holds it at the very end of the game. So when to use it and when not to use it are very interesting and fun choices. So would you like to pass the card to me and gain the first move? Um... Depends. Uh, so how much movement does it cost uh, to move across a hex? A fantastic question. Moving in the open hexes, which are the plain sort of beige hexes, that costs one movement point. Moving into trees costs two movement points, and moving into buildings costs two movement points. If you move onto a road hex at any point during your move, add one extra movement point to your entire move for the unit. I see. Um, so the other thing that we might want to actually do is open our hands, uh, not the deck window. So at the top of the screen, you see the buttons that have the different uh, icons for the factions, the Iron Cross, the Soviet Star, etc. So yep. you're going to want to open the German one, and then you're going to want to draw five cards just by clicking on them. Uh, I'm not drawing any cards. Up left, right? Uh... Let's see. It should have say show G high German hand window. It looks like the German Iron Cross. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, yep. Cool. All right. So, draw a card. Yep. Draw a card. How many cards? Five. Five cards is the total number we're looking for. Now the other thing to note is that you can completely ignore everything on this card except for the order that's at the very top and the action that is at the middle. The rest of the card is used only if you draw it as part of a re re resolution action. So if we're trying to roll a die, we're actually going to flip a card from our deck in order to roll a dice. That's why there's dice at the bottom of every card. And the card decks are a perfect uh, distribution of... 2d6, a perfect bell curve of 36 uh, dice possibilities, but it's doubled because it's a 72 card deck. So, let's see how this actually goes down. Uh, so, uh, now you I'm can gonna look pass and say... You the thing. Okay, so you're going to pass me the initiative. So, right click on the initiative or just actually, uh, there you go, just press to use, it says. Okay, so there you go. So, now you get to move first. So, go ahead and right click on a move and choose to play it as an order. That's probably the thing you're going to do first, I assume, since neither of us really uh, have line of sight to each other to fire. Yep, but... So I have to have a move card? In, in order, order to, to move, you have to have a move card. That's correct. If you don't have a move card, it might not be a bad idea to discard a bunch in order to get one. And the Germans, having some of the most uh, flexible and tactically superior officers, have the highest capability of discard. You can discard up to six cards, which if you were attacking, you'd actually have a six-card hand. Uh, other factions like mine, the Soviets, can only discard three. Okay, so you played a move order. So now what you will be doing is activating a single unit to move. But that kind of okay. sucks because you need to move more than one guy. Well, this is where leaders come in and why leaders are super important. If you activate a leader with an order, he can then activate everyone around him up to a radius equal to the command number. So that's uh. why it might not be a bad idea to put uh, Corporal Winkler on the right-hand side. You don't have to. That's just not a bad idea to keep your, your squads... Um, and and the, there's other reasons to do that. So I'm going to recommend you do that, and then we'll find out why soon enough. Okay. So you can activate either Corporal Winkler or Lieutenant Von Christis. Karstis. Von uh, Karstis. Which one would you like to move? Which group? Uh, Lieutenant Von Karstis. Okay. So technically, I think you can right-click and choose activate, or you can just draw a box all around them and choose main functions activate, or you can just move them. I mean, the, the right-clicking functions are really for when you're not on Skype with me, <laughs> for all intents and purposes. Okay, so here's another important fact. 
every hex that you move, you have to stop and allow me time to play Opportunity Fire. I'm going to tell you right uh, now, I'm not going to do that because I don't really have a line of sight or range to shoot you. There's a big forest in the way. But just to get in the habit of moving one space, then pausing, then moving the next space, then pausing. You have to wait for me to say yes or no because if I want to uh, tell you to stop, then I am simply going to do this. And you'll hear the sound effect. Uh, that's the stop button at the top of the screen there uh, to the left of the next uh. order button. So that's just a nice, uh, useful thing. But I can tell you right now, you can go ahead and move. Just do your do your moves, like move into the next text, then move into the next text. Go ahead. Okay, so you got right into the, the building there, and that was one, two, three... Uh, sorry, one, two, three, four to get in the building, and your guys both have at least four movement points, so you're all good. So now you can move the rest of the units there. Okay, he moved one into the clear zone, two, three, four to get into the building. When you move over a fence like that, it costs an extra movement point. And I suppose I moved the other one, here. Yeah. Okay, so now because you've taken those objectives, we can change those over to Axis Control, just like that. And because you took objective number five, we know that's an open objective and it's worth one victory point. So at the top right, I'm going to add one victory point to the Axis. You're winning the game! For now. For now. For now. So that was your move. Uh, now, the Germans, because of the way this particular scenario is set up, the Germans can play up to two orders before they must end their turn. So, uh, click on the next order button at the top of the screen with a little broom on it. Uh, next order with the broom. Yep. Okay. And now, if you would like, you can play another order. If you don't want to, you don't have to. You can also play any actions that are applicable, and we'll, you know, make our way through those as we get there. If you don't want to play any more orders, then you have to... Where's the end turn button? I don't remember. Uh, what's... Uh, sorry, uh, the, what's the range option again? The range is... The middle uh, number on the units is the range in hexes that they can fire. Okay. So middle, so 10, 6, and like... So, okay, tactically, if I wanted to move Captain... Winkler's squad into objective four. It's going to be pretty hard for me because if I take the straight road, you, you get multiple opportunities of fire, and I don't think I can go through the forest, right? Because Winkler's move speed is six. The rifle squad can get in, but not Winkler. Well, the uh, let's see here. So the rifle squad has a movement of four, and uh, isn't it seven. Seven is the morale of the rifle squad. Oh, morale. The bottom oh, right okay. is movement. So the way I uh, always remember it is morale is in the top right. That's defense. Opposite of that in the bottom left is firepower. So you have defense and offense in opposite corners. So that's how I usually remember it. So the other thing about this is that Corporal Winkler provides a bonus to every unit and weapon in his hex. So if you look, he's got a one command, right? Yep. You have to add that one to every statistic on the rifle squad's uh, uh, card shit. So it actually is an eight for morale. It's actually a six for firepower when Corporal Wink Winkler is inside the same hex. So he gives his command as bonus, basically, to all the stats of the units inside of it. Okay, uh, one additional question, Bridger. Okay. When I'm moving the characters, um, does a forest have a different defense penalty compared to a house? The forest has a cover rating of two, and a house has a, a building has a cover rating of three. So buildings have a better cover rating than a forest. A road has a cover rating of minus one, and being in the open has a cover rating of zero. I see. Okay. And those well, are always basically constant modifiers to the morale. So Von Karstis in the building there, uh, his rifle squad actually is at a 12 morale because they have seven as their base plus three for the house plus two more for Von Karstis himself providing leadership bonuses, basically yelling at them and saying, get down! You know. Oh, I, I changed the wrong... 
thing All there. Right. Five should have been under uh, active control. There we go. I'm going to play an order. Okay. Uh, Hang on. Oh, no, I don't have another move action. Ah. So I'm just going to chill. Just okay. So now I need to find the button that actually ends the turn. I thought there was a undo last move. Allow another player to take your nation. There used to be a button that would end a turn. Just hit end the order at the top of the screen there, and I think that might automatically do it. Maybe not. The, the, this uh, particular vassal module has actually changed a little bit since I have uh, last seen it. You know, it's got an axis and allied order thing, but it does not seem to uh, keep track of whose turn it is. But I guess we'll try it now. So, I am now going to pull up my hand and see what the hell I can do in this situation. I've got a couple moves, so let's use that. I'm going to play that as an order. And I am going to activate all of these guys to move. Uh, oh, is it taking time? What is it doing here? Oh, well. I'll have to figure that out later. So I am going to activate all of these guys to move using the leader here. And this squad is actually at a total of two movement points because it's carrying this machine gun. All right, so we're going to go one. Uh, let me drag both of them. One. Two. And that will uh, allow me to control... Objective number two. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the movement to get into the trees here, but that'll have to do. This squad, excuse me, is going to go one to that road, eventually, if the program didn't freeze on me. This is the <laughs> best demonstration ever. I hate this program so much. <laughs> but it's the best way to play it. It's definitely freezing. There we go. Two, and then three, four into the woods there. One, two, three into the woods here. One, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, why can I do that? Because this rifle squad is actually got a movement point value of six because the leader is modifying it. And it moved along a road, giving it a total of seven movement points for this turn. So that's how he got there. Then this guy is going to go one, two, three, four. And now my order is over. Soviets completed the order. Now, what do we do next? Well, I think I'm going to play another move order. Just like that. And we are going to activate all of these guys over here on the right-hand side. And if any of these things would work, that would be fantastic. Huh. Somebody's going to have to help me with finding out why Vassal isn't working properly. So, let's see if I can actually get this guy where he needs to go without getting shot. All right. One. Two. Two. Three and four, five. Oops, they're both in there. So that's how. There we go. That's how he got there because he moved along a road and he's got the Corporal Krylov helping him out with the movement. Unfortunately, this machine gunner doesn't, so he's going to move. Yeah. One, two, three. And he's going to end his move there because he can't go any further. This squad here, one, two, how many does he have? Four, three, four to there. All right. Now, do I have any other cards I want to play? Nope. Nothing here is useful. So I'm going to end my turn. And I don't know how to do that. So I'm just going to pass it over to you. So go ahead. Um... My question is, uh, you get to you, how, uh, draw can cards. Can you see through the way. forest? Can you see through the forest? Forest, you cannot see through. Okay. You should be okay. uh, getting your hand back up to five cards. Okay. I forgot that should have happened at the end of your last turn. Yep. Now look at your hand and decide if you have at least two orders that you want to play this turn, and if you don't, it might not be a bad idea 
to discard some cards and redraw because you don't want to wind up using only one order per turn. It's much more valuable to use multiple orders per turn. Um, all right, so now my question is, do I have line of sight from my little position on number two to any of your soldiers? No, because you're in forest, right? But what about the guys in the middle of the road? Okay, so yeah. hang on. Your, your guys, which guys? On the bottom uh, right? Lieutenant von... Oh, okay, and... that's position five. That's objective five. Yep. Yes, you can always see into the target hex. The only time line of sight matters is if there are intervening obstacles. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, so is there any... Uh, so the range of this squad is... How do I... Like, there was a way to bring up, like, all the stack tiles. Hover, like, hover over it with your mouse for about a second. Yep, all right, so the range of five. Yep, and now remember, range is modified by the leader. He's giving them, you know, good orders and telling them to, you know, stick your rifle on this thing so it gets support so you get longer range. So they actually have a range of seven. Okay, so now my question is your medium MG. Uh, when that moved into the open road, wouldn't that have provoked an opportunity fire? Uh, it would, in fact. Would you like to retcon that and pretend that you shot at it? <laughs> yeah, let's all right. try that. Let's do that then. So let's pretend that none of us move all these guys back one hex because they're not here yet. We'll, we'll retcon this for the purposes of demonstration because that's what this is. So uh, what you would first do is the instant that my machine gun moves into that spot, right click, uh, well, you'd, you'd do this little whatever just for the purposes of, but you'd say I'm playing a card uh, right click on the fire order that's in your hand and choose play as action okay play as action select action fire there you go so you'll notice that the fire order is also an action because you can play a fire order as an order on your turn or you can play it as an opportunity fire which is what you're doing right now but that can only be played during an opponent's movement order so you're playing a fire order. Now you would choose to activate the leader and the guys under, directly underneath him. And you yep. would normally, in a normal order version of the fire action, you would be able to also activate the rifles down in the bottom left because they are within two of your leader. Von Karstis is a very good leader. He can order those guys over there even though they're two hexes away. However, opportunity fire, you can only make a single shot. So you're not able to create... Uh, a fire group with those two units. If this unit was here, they'd all be able to shoot together. But if they're not adjacent, they cannot shoot together. They would have to shoot separately, which would be legal if it was your turn, but because it's my turn, you can only make one shot. Your best shot is with that rifle squad that has uh, Von Karstis in the same hex as him. So, uh, let's see. Let's calculate this up. You're going to shoot at my machine gun. Uh, sorry, my machine gun squad. Uh, and your base of fire is five firepower, right? You're going to well, add the two, makes it, seven. makes it seven. Then you're going to roll the dice. Click on the axis roll on the right-hand side there. Uh, axis roll, axis roll. Right-hand side. I don't see any. All the way to the right on the right-hand side of the map, there's die roll, event, and random hex boxes. Yep. The die roll one should say axis roll directly above it. Uh, okay, yep. Roll. There we go. So you got a total of eight. So it's eight plus the uh, the the seven that we just observed earlier, which means you got a total of fifteen. So now I am going to take my rifle squad, which is at eight, plus two for the woods is ten, minus one for the roads is nine. Nine plus nine is eighteen. So my squad survives because you were not able to defeat my defense roll with your attack roll. Okay? Now, the next thing I did, and we'll con the thing about opportunity fire, is when you make an opportunity fire, that opportunity fire is active for the entire rest of the movement phase. So you can uh. keep shooting as long as I am continuing to move on that single move card. Basically, your guys noticed that I'm moving, and they're shooting the whole time. So now yep. I can move these guys in here, and you get to shoot again at this hex now instead. So go ahead and roll the dice again, and we're going to add that to your seven. Okay. Axis roll. Oh, it's a five. So that's a 12. Uh, both of these squads, uh, well, the first one, the first squad, the rifle squad there, is actually at a 12 himself. 
8 plus 2 for the Woods plus 2 for the Leader is at a 12. So he automatically passes the roll. Survives. But I still have to roll the dice because when your deck runs out of cards, triggers the advance of the time track. So I'm going to click that uh. right now. And nothing special happened. So now i got to roll for my Leader who can tie but cannot fail the roll. I could potentially tie if I roll Snake Eyes. He's at exactly 10. 8 plus 2 for the Woods. So we'll roll for that. So he got plenty. He's over. However, take a look at that card right there. You'll see in the bottom right-hand side of that last card on the left uh, is a sniper roll, a sniper trigger. Doubles are usually sniper triggers. What that means is now we're going to roll a random hex right here at the bottom, and I get to break anyone in or adjacent to that hex. So at the bottom left of this card I just flipped, I8 has been chosen by the random draw of a card. So I get to uh, break your unit there. Now, yep. the sniper doesn't just represent snipers, because you have to remember... When you play a fire order, that's not the only firefight that's happening. That's a directed firefight by the leader who's organizing everybody to hit a single point. But outside of that, everybody's still shooting at everybody else. There's shots happening all the time, but it's only the firefight that the fire shots that you play with an order that are coordinated enough to do heavy enough casualties to represent on the board. So a sniper trigger represents the random bullet hitting exactly the right guy or right set of guys or maybe just some ordinance from another part of the the fight here not even on this map a mortar went completely wild and landed right in the middle of your your troops there so the sniper represents all of those things at the same time it's another way of sort of narrating the story that's going on chaos in war war is hell war is chaos etc so that just happened now um, I, uh, I'm still good with all my guys made their defense rolls. Now I'm moving this guy up into the woods and you get to shoot again. Now, here is an interesting problem because previously your line of sight was basically clear and technically we should have checked that earlier, but, uh, your, your line of sight was basically clear. Now you have a, uh, a, a fence in between you and me. Now fences don't block line of sight, but they do make it harder for you to hit me. There's stuff in the way. So in this case, this particular fence adds a one, or subtracts one from whatever your fire attack total is. Thicker uh, hindrances, for example, this orchard, will actually reduce the fire attack by two. And this field over here reduces the fire attack by three if it's in between you and your target. So go ahead uh, and Actually, roll. Bridger, yes. um, doing the LOS thing, the previous two rolls were also blocked by a fence. Not the most recent one, but the original one, yes. Well, I'm using the LOS tool, dragging from my guy to yours, and it breaks ah, the fence. Ah, but the fence that's directly adjacent hmm. to you is never counted for this uh, purpose. Okay. Remember, it has to be in between your hex and the enemy hex. You don't ever count the terrain that's in the enemy hex when you're checking line of sight. Okay. Okay, so for this purpose, go ahead and roll and then add 7 and subtract 1. Uh, uh, so 13 minus 1 is 12. Okay, so it's 12 again. This squad has a total of 8 uh, plus the 2 from the woods. So let's see if they survive. If it'll let me roll. There it is. Yes, they are successful in surviving. And then everybody else here would move their thing, and now we successfully retconned. Now, we're back okay. to your actual turn. Uh, would you like to... Uh, and also refill your entire hand because you would have had a full hand before. So go ahead. Uh, it is your turn, and you have a full hand. Would you like to discard? If you have a recover card, that wouldn't be a bad thing to play because you've got a broken unit there. Yep. Uh, okay, I'm going to play a recover card. Oh, you're right. I did forget to play, change number four. There we go. Okay. Going to play a recover. So the way recover works is now you're going to roll a die and you're going to try and get lower than your morale. Obviously, the higher okay. morale troops were going to recover easier. So the morale is seven, but it's also plus two because you're in cover. Uh, of the woods. Yep. So they're feeling more secure, which allows the sergeant or corporal there to get them under control and say, You're German! You should not uh, be. I equal. Ooh, I equal. So equal. Equal is terrible. Equal means that you are suppressed. Means that you have minus one to all your stats. 
It can't actually get worse. The sergeant can get up and say, Get out of the foxholes, you idiots! And then the guys stay in the foxholes, and his authority is now in question. (laughs) So they're suppressed. They're really scared. Um, (laughs) Now, what's interesting is this breaking and unbreaking represents the uncertainty of war. Okay, you, you shoot at me, but... How do you know whether you actually did enough casualties to knock my squad out? You don't, really. Your your perspective, from your perspective as the German commander over there, you can shoot at my guys and then you'll see fire stop shooting from there. But was that because you hit a bunch of them? Are there casualties? Did they retreat? Or maybe they're just laying low and they're going to come and pop their heads up in 10 seconds and start shooting again. Maybe they're reloading. The broken state is the uncertainty of did we actually wipe them out? When you break someone who's already broken, that's when you're certain you've definitely killed them and they're out of the fight. So it's a very cool mechanism to indicate the uncertainty of combat. Okay, so we have that. Uh, So your recover order is over. I'm sorry it didn't work out very well for you. It's okay. Uh, So next order time. Yep. Uh, uh, I'm going to play a fire attack. Okay, so go ahead and right click on it and play fire attack. Uh, now, hang on, we got to undo that. You have to play it as an order, not as an action. Oh, you only okay. play as an action when it's my turn and I'm moving on, the, on a move order. Okay, so you're okay. playing it as an order here, and that means that, let's see, uh, you are probably going to activate the only people who can see and shoot me. So are you activating Von Karstis again? Yep. Okay. So which are you going to fire at? The machine gun squad is actually in the least cover. Okay. Going to fire at the machine gun again. So you've got your base of fire seven. Do you have any cards with actions that can improve your fire attack? Sometimes there are uh, uh, cards that say if you're firing a German squad or this or that. Not right now. Okay. So go ahead and roll your dice then. Seven plus whatever you roll. Okay. Roll. Nine, seven, seven plus, plus nine. nine, so 16, not bad. And I am sitting pretty at, let's see, this is eight uh, plus two minus one for the road is a total of nine. So uh, nine plus six is also 17. So based uh, on- 15. 15, yes, I can't count, I'm sorry. So that uh, that's a successful attack. Woo, Duh. first blood. There, first blood, yeah. Well, nobody's died yet. Remember, they might just be cowering because they're cowards and fuck them. But also, (laughs) uh, you've now played two orders, and so your turn is over. Go ahead and hit the next order button to clear everything out. Yep. All right. Now, the other thing I didn't mention but is very important is that you can never activate the same unit or player twice. So the units, Von Karstis and the guys in the middle there, if you had activated them to fire first and then activated them again to fire, that would be illegal. You also, when you played the recover card, recover cards activate a player, not a unit. So when you play the recover card, you play it on yourself, and then you would, pl- you would try and recover each of your broken units in turn. And you can't play recover twice because you can't activate yourself twice. So that's the way that the rule is written. All right, let's see if I have any recover cards. Of course I don't. That would be convenient. No. Um, Instead, what I'm going to do is discard these two cards, these three cards, because they're all useless to me, and then, uh, let's see, I am going to then draw my hand back up and it is your turn. So I basically skip my turn in order to discard some of my hand. And so I'll hit Uh, next turn. I'm going to play a recover card and try to get these guys back. All right, so now... Uh, as we saw before, they were at seven. Now they're at uh, they were at nine rather. Now they're at eight because they are suppressed. So you've got to get less than eight. Go ahead and roll. Less than eight. Yeah, snake eyes. Snake eyes. It also would be jammed if you were firing a weapon uh, like a machine gun. It would break the weapon that you were firing. But since you weren't firing a weapon, it does nothing. That's what the little uh, red uh, trigger means on the card there. So, they are successfully recovered. Oh, also, actually, when you play a recover, all suppression is removed. I should have mentioned that. So, they were actually at a 9 still. Um, forgetting my own game here. So, now, uh, right-click, and we can click Rally, and there they go. They're back. Yep. So, that's your first order. Do you have another order you want to play? If you have another fire uh, order, you can potentially wipe out that machine gun squad. Yep. 
potentially fire. Uh oh. Not happy about that. Uh, the order. Fire! Okay. So you're going to add 7 plus uh, whatever you roll. 14. And an event takes place. You see the little event trigger down at the bottom next to the dice? When you roll a 7, is usually the number that an event is on, uh, that stops everything. So you've got a 14. We just got to remember that. But before we do anything else, click on the Axis Event Draw, the box just underneath the, uh, the dice roll box. Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, so that is Deploy. You may remove a German squad from the map, and if you do, replace it with two matching teams. Now, the reason you might want to do this is because you could, for example, fit an extra team in that middle hex uh, of the middle map there, and that way you'd have three on top of each other, making it a stronger position. Right now, you can't move the squad in there because it's too big. It wouldn't fit. But if you want instead, you can deploy a single squad into two uh, teams instead. I don't think I'd recommend it for this particular scenario right now, so you can kind of just ignore the event if you'd like. Okay. Yep. Ignore Okay, so now we go back to the fire attack, which was you hitting me with a 14, and I, if you've noticed, the rifle squad, which is broken, now only has a 6 morale. So they were very gung-ho about charging into combat, but once the bullets started flying, they're like, Sarge, I can't do it! I mean, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Vasily, I cannot do it! Yeah, it's not as good as my German. Alright, so... What? Uh... <laughs> what? That was going to be a Soviet accent? What? Yes, comrade. We must try to stop them from doing terrible Soviet accent. All right. <laughs> let's okay, roll the dice. Sean Connery in let's, Red October. Let's roll the dice, okay? It's roll the dice time. My is seven plus... Oh, a nine. So he passes, successfully avoiding your death. This time. This time. All right. So go ahead and end the order, and then it'll be my turn, and you can draw up. Now, I don't have a recover card, and I'm worried that you're going to get a fire card again and maybe take him out next time, because you got pretty, I got pretty lucky there with that nine, but I easily could have failed that roll. So, I am going to do something very odd. I am going to play a route order on myself. That's right. I am going to sow confusion in my own ranks because the route orders represent essentially the possibility that broken units will say screw this and head back towards the, you know, nice warm tents uh, and the back line. So this can happen at any time and I'm choosing to make it happen now. So what this is, is I'm going to now try to beat my morale, get over my morale for every number over my morale, that unit is going to retreat one hex. So my morale is currently at seven because of the, the road and the woods. So I'm going to roll to try and get higher than a seven. I got exactly a nine, which is perfect because now I can take these guys and move them one, two hexes back where they are out no, of... Hang on, hang on. No, no, no. Hang on. You can't fire on a retreat. No, no, but I have a card that says... Uh... So, okay, so I just want to know if it works. It's action hidden mines. Oh! You, it would work, but it says defender only, doesn't it? Oh. Uh, yeah. If we were in a okay, scenario so, with an attacker uh, and a defender, and you were the defender, you'd be able to play that card. Okay, but for this scenario, neither of us are attackers or Correct. This is like two okay. recon groups meeting. We're both, it's kind of like a meeting engagement. Neither of us had this territory ahead of time. We're both patrolling into it, and we happen to encounter each other here by this nice lake with this little uh, beachfront home. Okay. So uh, most, most maps are attack and defend. Uh, this is one of the few that isn't. Uh, most scenarios, I should say. All right, so that I routed my guys. They're done. Let's see, what else can I play? I can play um, Advance. I'll play Advance, and I will play that on von, on, on Sergeant, what is this guy's name, Kovalev? Ko Kovalev. Kovalev. I'm going to play it on Sergeant Kovalev. He says, Comrade, you must make it to the front line. So he is going to the front line. He's going to go here. Bam. The next one's going to come here. The next one's going to come here. And this guy's going to come there. And... 
that rifle guy is kind of just out and he's lonesome there a little bit. Um, but I guess he's going to come here. Now, because I played in advance, you're not allowed to opportunity fire opportunity because fire. these guys are essentially belly crawling. They're not giving you the opportunity to shoot them while they're running across the field. Okay. So, that is my second order. Do I have a third? I could try to fire with those guys over there, but they already moved. I already activated them to advance, so they're not able to fire. Um, oh, so wait. Soviets get three orders a turn? And we, I get yes, because we have so many more troops. <laughs> Is Basically, you get orders, uh, a number of orders in the scenario based on the number of troops you have. But because I have so many compared to yours, uh, I get three orders. Now, to be fair, your units are vastly superior to mine, uh, in, especially in terms of their accuracy. The range is sort of a factor of their accuracy uh, in, in so far as your guys can shoot at me and I can't shoot at you because you guys are more accurate than mine with your five range and my three range, if you'll notice, on my rifle squads. So that's sort of how the, how the, the scenarios are balanced. The Germans tend to have fewer but higher quality units. The Russians tend to have more but lower quality units. And the Americans have their own balance, which is somewhere in between and sort of the British. And the French... Okay, so all right, uh, uh, the le French just have a very boxes, interesting... Left box is uh, range? No, left Sorry, middle, bo uh, middle number is range. You've got firepower in the far left, then range, okay. then movement, and the top right is the defense. Okay. All right, I think I am going to play a move order on the right-hand side here, and I think it is going to be... Uh, I'm going to activate the machine gun squad... And let's see, they're going to have two movement points plus one if they go on a road. So this is me hoping that you don't have any fire attack cards. Here we go. One. Uh, Actually, yeah. you know what? I can't make it to the woods. Shit. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's, let's back that up for a second. One. Two. And we're kind of stuck here. Um, yep, they're done. They can't go any further because they're carrying a heavy-ass medium machine gun. Okay, so that's the end of that. That's the end of my turn. So it's back over to you. Drop my... Alrighty. Um... Still no recover card, son of a bitch. I'm just going to... Fire! That's so... a dangerous game you're playing there, rogue. Uh, I will fire on. Yeah, I'll fire in your. I'll fire in your. Uh, is there any point in firing your command squad? No, I'll fire at the guys in the middle of the road. All right. So that is again supposed to be modified by the uh, the fence, which we keep forgetting about. But uh, go ahead and roll um, seven minus one because of the fence should be six plus an event. Six plus seven is thirteen. Go ahead and roll on the event section. You may Sappers. remove one mines or white marker. Wire marker. We don't have any of those, so you don't have to worry yep. about that. But you can see how these events could change the way the game plays. You can get reinforcements from an event. You can get air support from an event. You can get a radio and artillery from an event. You can get all kinds of crazy stuff happening from an event. Or sometimes maybe your weapon will jam from an event. Or you'll suppress an enemy. A lot of different crazy stuff can happen, and, it's, and it basically causes you to think on your feet. Okay, so. Now I have to respond, and it's 13 is the number to beat. I have a total of 9, so as long as I don't get 3 or less. I got 8, yeah, I got 6. And a sniper, so I can roll a random hex. Bam. O2. <laughs> way up there, so nothing happens. Um, so how do you reach 9 in terms of your base? Because it's minus 1. Oh, it's minus 1 for road. Plus, plus two, 2 for woods, for woods exactly. Right. Okay. All right, Streisel, see you later, buddy. Streisel's heading to bed. All right. So next up, uh, it is your next attack order, if you have one. Uh, my next order is I'm um, so I can just give up like cards. I can just burn two cards and draw two. Is that how it works? If you were to skip your entire turn, that would be possible. But you have already played an order, so you can't uh, you can't give up cards now. 
So I have to... You have to what, either play in order or just end your turn. Um, let me think. Uh, let me check ranges here. So the squad in the secondary farm is not in range of... It's not in range of the commander bonus, right? Because the two hexes means him, like his hex and adjacent to his hex? The two hex means, uh, sorry, a zero commander would affect the units in his hex. A one would affect also all the units adjacent to him. A two affects everybody within a two hex radius. Okay, so However, the, team, the, the, the team in the second, uh, second farmhouse uh, are affected by his bonus then. No, they can be activated by him, but he only provides that two bonus to units in his own hex. Ah, okay. So leaders only provide their bonus to units in their own hex. However, they can activate units up to a range equal to their bonus as well. So you ah. can activate multiple units to fire. And for example, when you just activated your guys to fire, the rifle squad in the house could also fire separately at a five. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, let's do that. Uh, if well, if you don't want to retcon it, I can play no, a five. Retcon, uh, go ahead. So they have right. one, two, three, four, five range, and they, they basically make it. Now, if you want to shoot at the guys in at the at the road there in the objective, you can do that without going through the field. So you'd only have a minus one. So you're four plus whatever you roll. Yep. Which is a very low chance, but you got a Love seven it. and another event. Yep. So uh, we, one German unit becomes veteran. Ooh. Ooh. So right click on one of your units and make it veteran. That unit gets plus one to all of its stats. It's the opposite of suppression. And that doesn't represent that your guys just, like, leveled up. Um, that represents that your uh, units were secretly this good the whole time, and we just discovered it right now. Nah, they leveled up, dude. Come on, <laughs> they leveled up. So are you trying to make your leader leveled up or your uh, squad? Um, it should be better. Well, if you make the, the leader veteran, it makes him harder to kill, but his firepower still doesn't have the range to reach an enemy. So, I mean, he's basically got a pistol. So it, that's not really going to help. If you want to increase your chances of damaging the enemy, make the squad veteran, and that'll make you attack at a, um, instead of a 7, it'll make you attack at an 8 from now on. Okay, let's do that. Uh, let me find out how to... So if you double click on it, it unpacks the uh, the hex, and that yep, allows you to move stuff around a little bit. So this is better back here. Unpack. There you go. Now they've got a little. Uh, also, still shows von Karstis as veteran. You said the right no, on him. Yeah, mine it does. That's weird. Sure well, we'll, we'll veteran. remember. It's not, it's not oh, a huge God, deal, Oh, God, I did right? horrible, made a horrible mistake. Now they're all veteran twice. <laughs> now they're all veterans. Hang on, hang on. We're just going to undo all the veterancy. Undo, undo. Okay, now start from here <laughs> and veteranize the squad. <laughs> all right, all right. You can veteran. actually pirate 1998. You can, in fact, get artillery in this game. Uh, it would actually go in a little radio box here in the corner, and you need to use the card called Artillery Request. When you play that, you're basically uh, calling on the radio to have artillery hit a specific hex. Only, well, it doesn't always hit that hex. Sometimes there's a little friendly fire action going on with artillery. So it's uh, buyer beware, as it were. Okay, so they became veteran, and uh, you were firing at an 11 at the guy in the woods who is currently at a 9. So unless he rolls snake eyes, which he didn't, he's fine. All right. Next up, uh, do you have any other orders that you want to play? Uh, uh, no, I'm passing my turn. All right. So it does look like not a lot is going on. I mean, you're sitting there firing. I'm kind of moving up. But this is a sort of very simple scenario designed to teach the basics of the game. There's no terrain height advantages or disadvantages. Uh, there's very simple terrain. And uh, there's very simple objectives. But for all I know, you could have an objective that says that objective 5 is worth, you know, 5 points. So I got to be on my toes and make sure I got to try and get all the objectives. Also... Another thing that you might try to do is 
try to sneak past me with your units and get them off my side of the map. That could get you bonus victory points. Or just getting your guys together to form a fire group that can all hit me simultaneously uh, that will vastly increase your chances of doing enough damage to really uh, really get some, some kills in. Now, I still don't have any Goram recover cards, so I am just going to discard a couple things here, like this and this and this, and pass the ba uh, the action back to you, sir. Alright, uh, I am going to discard some cards, too. Okay. Uh, actually, do I want to discard some cards? Hmm. And like all actually, things no. in this game, just right-click to choose to do it. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm going to discard some cards. I'm going to discard this. I'm going to discard this. So I draw two cards then. Yep. And pass it back to you. Okay. I am finally going to play a recover order because I finally got it. Trying to get this machine gunner guy here recovered. He's in the woods, which means I have to simply roll under an eight. And I did. Success. Guess what? Vasily has returned to the something. Motherland load something. Okay, that was my order. Now, what else we got here? We can maybe do something, because I have to assume that he's got something that makes these three objectives that he's holding worth points. So I want to try and take those from him. So I think a frontal assault would be best, don't you? <laughs> Only one problem, maybe. I don't have a frontal assault. So instead, I'm going to play a fire order. Okay. And I am going to activate my leader and the squad that he's with. And the squad next to him, and the squad next to him. Except none of them can hit you, can they? Damn it. Stupid, crappy... Everything's... Uh, Stupid, all right. crappy AK-47s? No, they've got Mosin Nagans. What, are you kidding me? AK-47s, oh, oh, right. that'd be nice. Right, right. 47 came much later. You're thinking of the... Uh, uh, the the Sturmgewehr 44, which was the German rifle yeah. that the AK-47 was yeah. based off of, which actually would be represented by stormtrooper units uh, in this game, which you don't have any on the board. All right, so anyway, my squad is going to attack with its pitiful seven fire attack to your units in the in the building there, and we'll see how hard that is to crack. Seven plus seven is a 14, but ladies and gentlemen, hold the phone. We have an event. Elan, increase my surrender level by one. <laughs> Look at that. Increase surrender level. Fantastic. Uh, that so do? that means that you have to now kill eight of my chits in order to, eight of my counters in order to win via surrender. Uh, okay. Um, so, hang on. So I have, just for calculating my defense, right? Yep. You're firing on my squad, so that's like a. I'm eight, firing on a hex. When you fi control conduct ah. a fire attack, you target a hex, and all units in that hex must defend. So, let's uh, first quickly explain the fact that order in which you defend is important. If you roll for your leader first and your leader breaks, then your squad will not get the benefit of his plus two to their morale. So you always roll for everything but the leader. Then you roll for the leader oh, okay. last. Okay, so so I have ahead. to roll twice. We're rolling for the squad, which is seven plus one for the veteran, plus two for Von Yeah, Kajis. I rolled a nine. Yeah, you're going to make it. Plus three for the building that you're in, uh, which is clearly uh, 13. So yeah, you're fine even if <laughs> you didn't roll. Um, yeah. So now your leader, however, is at 12. And I just rolled a five. So okay, seven. so he's fine also. So that was my fire attack. Uh, I am going to end my turn there and draw two cards. It's over to you. Okay. Uh, ooh, it's really hard to... Uh, so you're at 10 in the, in the woods. And your other squad is at a 10 as well. No, your squad's at 12. Rifle squad's actually got more morale than Kovalev. Yes. The rifle squad in the woods that's in the same hex as Kovalev has 12 because he's to keep telling them to keep their heads down and the other squads don't have the benefit of Kovalev running at them and screaming to keep their heads down. <laughs> so it's pretty hard to break that. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to discard some cards again. Yep, you want to want to make sure you have a fire card in your hand so that if I go and move in the open, you can shoot at me. That's very important. 
Yep. All right. In the interim, I am going to play an advance order. And I'm going to order everybody next to Kovalev. He's going to go blau, blau, blau. And oops, that's not supposed to happen. He's supposed to be there. And this guy goes yeah. Okay. All my guys moved. And that is going to be it. Back to you. Uh, don't know. Wait, you played a move order, right? So no, I, I played an advance order. They all oh, moved advance? only one okay. X. Yep. So, um, I'm going to play a move order. Oops. So, I'm going to move. Damn it. And That's these bad. guys are going to make their way here. So, nothing, nothing. Eh. Yeah, I don't have line of sight to any of those guys. Now, be careful. Yeah. You don't want to keep, you don't want to leave that right-hand side defenseless, because if my guys just walk off your edge of the map, they get points. I yeah, well, I... They're just going to sit there and cover the they're road. Just, they're just chilling in the woods. There you go. Yeah. yeah they're, they're, well, they're still covering the road, right? Yes, absolutely. So. All right. So, uh, Lieutenant, uh, I don't know. What do I do here? Um, they're getting closer. One advance at a time. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I'm just going to fire. Yeah, I'm just going to fire. I'm gonna fire. Uh, is that is that squad in the middle next to the medium machine gun in the woods? Yes. If you want to see, uh, there's a button at the top rightish of the screen that has units and binoculars. You can turn the units on and off so you can see. Okay. Yep. So they're in the woods. All right, I'm just gonna fire the ones in the woods again. Okay. Let me see if targeting works. Yep. You can still target them by right clicking. Okay. Yeah. So target them. Okay. And I'm gonna roll. Uh, five. Five so plus five. your eight, right? Uh, five plus eight, yeah, thirteen. So thirteen. Let's see. They've got ten and seven, so they're fine. Yep. Okay. And else? that's your two orders, group. right? Uh, well, he can activate the guys in the farm below him. Ah, and yes, they, they can fire as well. And they will target this guy. Okay, they're firing at that guy. Roll seven. Seven plus event. Oh, event. Seven plus event. eight is uh is Eliminate one broken unit. Oh, you are lucky. Your machine gunners oh, are oh, oh. They're survivors. Yeah. Alright, so uh seven plus five is twelve. Uh seven plus five. I thought you had seven plus eight. Oh no, seven plus five for those guys down at the bottom. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. So this guy here has nine. Nine plus seven is also okay. Yep. All right. So that's your two orders. Yep. And now I am going to do something crazy. I'm going to discard two cards. And now it's your turn. Okay. Uh... I guess I'm just going to... Oh, what are smoke grenades? What do they do? Aha! Uh -huh. So, um, go ahead and uh, look at what it says. It should say something along the lines of uh, play uh, on a unit activated to move with boxed movement. Uh, play smoke in or adjacent to a hex occupied by a German unit with box movement that is currently activated to move, yes. So, that is, for example, uh, if, if your guys have box movement, my guys don't have box movement, we, uh, we don't know how to use smoke grenades. Um, but you see how next to your guys, it, the movement itself, the value has a box around it, right? Yep, so yep. the boxed movement allows them to do things like use smoke grenades. Boxed range lets them do things like use suppressive fire or um, something to that effect, or spray fire. Uh, boxed firepower gives them bonuses in melee and amongst other things. So the boxes basically give them specific bonuses and allow them to use cards that other units can't use. That's another thing about my shitty units. They have no boxed anything. <laughs> okay. So, but what does a smoke... Uh, so what does the smoke grenade do? Does All right, so smoke cover? chit. There's oh, a pile of smoke chits. They range between 1 and 10. I'll just drag one on here for the purposes. That right there would provide 5 hindrance in, out, or through the hex. So anybody firing into the hex, out of the hex, or through the hex will uh, essentially have minus 5 to their firepower 
uh, roll when they're trying to roll to attack. So that okay. allows you to basically provide cover for your units. Uh, we'll just put that back there. But it's a random draw anywhere between 1 and 10 because apparently smoke was not super effective uh, <laughs> in that way. Like it could be if there was no breeze. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm going to discard some cards. Okay. I am going to play a fire attack, a fire order. I'm going to activate my leader and the rifle squad next to him and the squad carrying the machine gun next to that. And they are all going to fire together. So, the squad next to the leader, or in the same hex as the leader, rather, has a base firepower of 5, plus 2 for the leader makes it 7. Then I can add another one for the rifle squad next to him, making that an 8. And... I think that's where I'm going to stop. I'm going to combine those attacks into a total of 8. So 8 plus 10 and a sniper. So uh, that is a total of 18 coming at your building there. But first we have to resolve the sniper. And it's way over there in the field. Some mortar just landed over there and nothing happened. So there's um, 18. So, But you can only activate the ones that are right next to your guy, right? I can activate all of the units within two hexes of my guy. However, As in two. Yep. the guy in the back here, he doesn't have a line of sight because there's woods in a hex between him and you, so he can't fire. Okay. Uh, however, uh, there was basically the guys in this hex and this hex just fired at you. The leader doesn't have enough range, so he doesn't count, but the rest of those fired a total of eight. Five for the rifle squad, plus two for the leader, plus one for each additional firing piece. Okay. So, you've got uh, an 18 hidden at you. You want to take it on the squad first, which, if we recall, had a 13 morale. Holy uh, shit. Yes, 13 morale. So, 13 plus. Yep, 6 beats yeah, it. Yeah, seems like he's fine. Von Karstis might not be so lucky! He's uh, so, Von Karstis is at a 12 plus. Yep. Nope. Nine. Damn All right, well... <laughs> Now I am going to fire with the other two uh, units here. Uh, this, these guys in this hex, they were also activated, but I chose not to have them join in. I could have made my fire attack at 20 instead of 18 if I had had both of those, the, the, the rifle squad and the machine gun, both fired with the whole thing together. Then they could have done it. Actually, sorry, the rifle squad can't because it doesn't have the range. However, the machine gun does. It has a range of 10. So, I'm going to fire with the machine gun, which is six. Ah, aha, but I have this. Sustained fire action. Uh, add plus two when firing a mortar or machine gun. However, if the fire attack roll is doubles, I have to break the machine gun. So, I now have an eight, and the roll is doubles, of course! Fantastic! The best thing that could have happened. The machine gun is freaking broken now. <sighs> My head. Okay. So, uh, there was a time trigger, however. If you notice the double sixes there, box cars, uh, a time trigger is only on two cards in the entire deck, each of our decks, rather, so there's a total of four cards in play. If a time trigger is rolled, it means that we advance the time track one step. So you'll notice at the top of the screen there, the time track is currently at two, and that's where it starts in the scenario. And the sudden death marker is at 7. If this track advances all the way to the 7, there is a chance the game will end. If there isn't, then the next time it advances to the 8, there's a greater chance the game will end. And if it doesn't, then the next time it advances to a 9, there's an even greater chance the game will end. However, uh, we are currently at 3. Uh, we can also potentially uh, do the following. We now have to reshuffle my fate deck. So let me go ahead and open up the deck here. I'm going to do this. And now everything is shuffled together in my deck. Uh, do so I have to do that too? Only the triggering player has to, because another okay. way to trigger a time advance is for your deck to run out. Okay. So if you don't ever pull the time trigger, but you go through your entire deck, you'll also trigger time advance. That's what helps end the game. All right, okay. so the other thing that can happen is 
if there were a defender in this scenario, they would automatically get one VP for each time trigger that passes. We would also remove a smoke marker if possible. And if you have any cards in your hand that say dig in as an action, you would be able to play them as uh, time has been passing. Maybe this means that you've built some uh, crude defenses like foxholes. Do you have any dig in actions? No, I do not. Okay, then there's none to be played, so that's the end of that chapter. Okay, so uh, my machine gun is broken, and my fire attack roll on you was what? It w I got uh, 12, right? 12. Didn't I? 12 plus my 8, uh, which is not bad, um, in fact. So that's a 20 firepower attack to your pathetic guys in the thing. They still have 13, though, so you have to get higher uh, than 5 it, on your why roll. Why is it 12 plus 6? Oh, because the machine gun. 12 right. plus 8, yeah. because the machine gun is 6, plus the 2 that I used while I was using it. Oh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So it's 20? 20. So you have 13 Ooh. for your squad, plus whatever you roll. Six. 13 plus ah. 6 is not enough. Break that motherfucking squad. We've been firing um, at that damn house. Hang on, hang uh -oh. on, hang on. Just, uh -oh. just a question. If I play a card that says, play when a German squad is about to break, replace with a matching team instead, do they... Do they um, and lose, I lose one VP, but do they still retain veteran status or not? Well, the first thing is to explain when that would be useful. So let me first pull out a team. Line team. Here's what a team looks like. You oh. can see it's not nearly as strong as a squad. A team is representing six, five to six guys. A squad is representing 10 to 12 guys. So that is is not quite as useful right now because, for example, um, right now all that's going to happen is your squad is going to break and flip over to the other side. It's yep. still got plenty of cover. It's got a very good chance to recover. However, if your squad was about to break and it was already broken, then you might switch it and instead of losing the entire squad, you can play Light Wounds, which is the action that you have, to make sure that you only lose basically half the squad instead. Ah, okay. But yep. that's not the case. You'd rather just have the squad break and have a chance to recover the full squad and then save light wounds for if it breaks again. Okay. All right? So yep. uh, now you need to roll for Von Karstis, who's at a 12. So you need an 8 or higher. Oof. That's uh, not a 12. All right, so he yep. is broken too now. Broken as What's well. What's rammed? Jammed. Jammed. Oh, Jammed. Okay, no <laughs> oh man, your guy just got rammed. <laughs> I was about to say, like, you lied about the lack of naval ships. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so th that again, if you were firing a weapon and you rolled a double one, a snake eyes in this case, uh, then that would jam the weapon and break it. But you weren't okay. rolling for a weapon, so it basically we can ignore it. So, okay, successful turn is successful for me, except that I apparently broke my machine gun in an attempt to really hurt your units in the building. <laughs> well, you know, it happens. <laughs> there you go. So uh, we, we hit that thing on, on full blast. Okay, so do I have another order I want to play? I've played two. Um, now that you're... Huh. Now that you're a little bit broken, I'm going to play a move order. And I'm going to play it on this guy. So he is about to move. One. Two. Uh, can they shoot you? There, uh, oh, you there play, is you got to play a uh, fire there is. card. Uh, yeah, I'm going to shoot you here. Because they're, they're veterans, so their range is like two, right? Even though they're broken. So wait, you're trying to shoot which guys? The ones that just moved into the hex. I mean, I'm sorry, you're trying to shoot with which guys? Uh, with these guys? Von Karstis. Yeah, Von Karstis. So that's not necessarily a good thing, especially because they can't do it. They have oh. a one range now that they're broken. Actually, yeah, yeah, a two veteran, range because them... the veteran, you're right. However, uh, they still only have uh, three firepower. Why not activate the rifle squad in the south farmhouse there to fire. Okay. Let's do that. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to figure out which one I want. Uh, Alright, I'll use this one. Okay. No, you want to play that as an action. 
Oh, wait, sorry. Actions are the only things you can do on my turn. Yep, yep. Uh, fire! There we go. So, uh, now I am moving in the open, and one thing to know about uh, moving in the open is that if I tie your total, instead of being suppressed, I will break. If okay. you have a crossfire action, now would be a fantastic time to play it. I do not. Ah, oh, that's too bad. Okay, so roll your five plus whatever the roll is. Five plus six is eleven, uh, and you've Wait. also rolled a sniper. Whoops! 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 I There's an undo the button in the top left. There, you can undo that pull. Uh, how do I undo? Uh, the okay. red button on the far, far left of the the. the uh, okay. Uh, yep. There you go. So, so how yeah, how do I roll the sniper thing? The random hex is the bottom, just below the event one. Uh, bottom. bottom so you got bottom. dice roll, then event, then random hex on the right hand side of the screen there. Uh, okay. Random hex. Uh, access draw, right? Yep. Oh, shit. It's okay. Uh, you don't have to shoot your own guys. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to shoot my own you guys. Can never be, you, can never, you can never accidentally snipe your own guys. All right, yep. so we're just going to ignore that then because it didn't land next to me. And now I have to deal with an 11 fire attack to myself. I am 8. However, I do have this handy-dandy fence. Oh, the fence is zero cover. Never mind. I was hoping that it would give me a cover. But I have 8 plus 9. So he's okay. And let's see. Line of sight from here to there is blocked. So I'm going to move here. And you can't shoot me again because now I'm behind the uh, building. Okay. Uh, if you draw a line of sight between your guys in the building and my guys, the building that your other guys are in are is blocking the line of sight. Okay, so that's the end of my order, and now it's back to your turn. If you play a recover, I'm going to be so angry. Uh, no. I do not have a recover. Woohoo! Awkward. I, I, I feel in advance, maybe, in your works. Um, what am I going to do? Um, this is very awkward. Gumboots want to know if there's a way to watch the stream in a stream in a lower quality. Um, no, because I'm not a, like a super streamer, but it's not very high bit rate. You should be able to watch it. It's at it's it's jumping back and forth between like 150 and 600 kilobits per second. It's not a super high bit rate. Uh, so if you're having problems with that, I'm not sure I can help you. However, um, you should know I'm going to put it up on. I'm going to put the whole thing up on YouTube, and at when it does go on YouTube, you'll be able to choose the quality level there. Hope that oh helps. crap! I, I probably could have survived last turn actually. Oh well. Anyways, were you um, gonna play camouflage or? Yeah. Or concealment. Was, concealment was the one. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, um. So so walk me through. Like, will concealment do anything in melee combat? It will not. Okay. It only works with regular fire attacks. Okay. Um, I'm going to discard some cards then. All right. Lucky for you, I am also going to discard some cards. Whoops. No, I don't oh. want to play it as an action. I don't want to play it as an action. That's a discard. And okay. let's see. I'll also discard this one. Okay. And All right. Back to you. I will recover. Damn it! Uh, <laughs> Those are pretty so... much automatic recovers. <laughs> First, you want to recover Von Karstis, who is definitely an automatic recover because he would be at 13 and you can't possibly roll higher than 12. So just roll a card, bam, he's back. So we just rally right. him, bam. Uh, and uh, the other guy is now at a 12, so he can only tie if you roll a 6 here. That's the only way. Nope. So he is back right after this event is rolled. All right. Uh, suppress one unit in the hex. Hello, yo guys. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> this is not working out well for them. Oh, uh, so rally them? Oh, wait, what can I rally them? Uh, you should be able to. Right-click status functions rally. Uh, I think it's because it's stacked. Is it oh, well. Stack? I got it for you. All right. 
Ah, uh, now the stack is. This is so annoying. Now the stack is messed up. Put everything back. All right. There you go. Cool. Okay. Uh, so, so that was my your second, recover. So my second turn. Second order. Uh. Um. Yeah, they're just gonna fire straight up against the press squad. No. Don't do sure. it. They, sure no they ran over to the field and then just stopped like, Durr. I am admittedly nope. doing something that's not too bright in order to demonstrate the mechanics of the game. <laughs> this is not strategy you should endorse. Yes, yes. Except, you know, I do am not, do the not, Do not charge into the entrenched German position. I am Russian, and I did properly suppress all your guys before I charged across the field. Uh, okay, so rally one. Oh, well, pff, okay, well, too bad. No event. Um, so yeah, um, seven on. plus. We might have to actually rally. Oh, there is no broken units. Never mind. I'm wondering, I think you can rally a, an enemy unit with that as a result. I'll have to look it okay. up. Anyway, uh, go ahead. Medics, friendly fire. So much worse when it's medics with the friendly fire. Yep. <laughs> The roll. Yep, enemy or friendly. You have to, If one of my guys was broken, you'd have to rally him. That's awesome. Uh. Okay, so you're firing at me with a total of... What is it? 7 plus 8? 15? Yep. And we're sitting in the uh, open... No, 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 it's eight, it's, uh, yeah, 7 plus 8. 7 plus 8, 15. We're sitting in the open with 7 plus 7. And an event... And the event is Breeze. Woo! If there were fires, all blazes spread in direction three and <laughs> dissipates all smoke. Okay, yep. so those guys are broken. That definitely happened. Yep. Okay. Uh, and I guess I'm just going to fire with the guys, even though they get minus three. Like, might as well, right? Since I've already activated Von Karstis. Uh, Which guys? The ones in the south on they get a neg three. They actually can't hit. Oh no! Oh, there is no line of sight. Okay, there is no line of sight because it crosses the depiction of the building. Yep. Uh, and the other ones. Yep. Okay. Never mind. It's cool. Pass my turn. Well, it's a good thing we got a recover order then, because we're gonna try and mm -hmm. fix those guys. They are no longer suppressed. But they are still in the open, and we still have to get under six. Hey, we got under six! Success! These guys somehow... <laughs> <laughs> Boris, Sergeant Boris is out there, and he's like, Come on, you cowards! Comrades for the motherland! I don't know why he's German. <laughs> That's terrible. Okay, so... <laughs> That's step one. Step two is to play a card which I don't have, unfortunately. Um, well, we're going to play a fire order, and uh, we're going to have the fire team combination that we had last time, these guys here. <sighs> so that's a total of, I believe it was eight, right? We have five, six, seven, eight, including the two from the leader at your building there. Let's get a nice big roll. Five. All right, 12 for your hex. I think you auto-pass everything. Just roll two, two uh, cards. Another event for you. A hero! A German hero emerges! As if things weren't already bad enough. <sighs> uh, what is that? and teams, leaders. Uh, where's private something? Where's the hero? There he is, Dietl. Dietl appears. So... If not already in play, place the German hero in a friendly hex. Rally up to one broken unit there. You can place him in any friendly hex where you already have other units. Uh, he is fantastic because you do not lose victory points when he dies. Which means I... the best case scenario is he charges across an open field leaps into a machine gun bunker and single-handedly takes out the team with the machine gun. Worst uh, case but... scenario, he attempts to do that and dies. Who cares? Basically, he's a free unit that gets to do anything you want with him because he doesn't hurt your score if but he dies. He requires, 
He wears a move order, right? He does. He's also special in that he can be activated an infinite number of times. So you could, for example, activate him to move, run across a field, end up next to the enemy, then activate him to fire, fire into the hex next to him with grenades, then activate him to advance into the hex he just threw grenades into and fight the enemy in melee. He could do all of that in a single turn if you had the cards, and the heroes are the only ones that can do that. They are made to provide those movie moments of something amazing happening, like in Band of Brothers Episode 5 when uh, Captain Spears was it runs across the fight to link up with the other side and then runs all the way back it was amazing anyway um how can i play multiple action cards simultaneously you can play as many action cards as long as they qualify um for what you can do for example you can play multiple uh multiple hand grenades in the same firefight okay. And they will burn. Well, anyways, uh, I'm going to put Detail the hero here because he'll buff this squad, right? He would buff it by plus zero. You'll notice his command is oh. zero. He's a oh. leader, so he can still activate the guys in that squad with him if he wanted to move them or whatever, but okay. he can't really buff them per se. Um, not a bad place would be to put him in with Von Karsties. He can fit there because oh. that would Perfect. be a total of what, six silhouettes. It doesn't break the seven silhouette stacking limit, right? And that means if I try to melee attack you, you'll have an extra two firepower and an extra guy to absorb damage, and you can maybe use him to charge out there and go into melee. Okay, yep, cool. So, anyways, that was the first roll. So I dodge with my von Karsti, uh, with my squad. Seven <laughs> dodge. Oh, <plus>. whatever. <laughs> and the second roll, yeah, it's also a dodge. Yeah, it's Woo! also a dodge. Well, fucking Neo in this sh Neo in this shit. Yeah, that's my second card, I think. Um, second action, yep. Sorry. That was your second. Uh, second order. order, yeah. So I'll just draw, and it is your turn. All right. So I'm going to give the order to fire. Uh, for details. Oh, uh, sorry. The squad that von Karstis is in. I'm going to give uh, marksmanship, so plus two to that squad. Oh, that's um, the that's the one I was looking for. Gonna play uh, spray fire, so I'm gonna target Kovalev squad and this rifle squad. Okay. So, what's your total fire attack? It looks like Detail can actually participate in this. If you activate him as a leader, he can then activate the squad that's in the same hex as him. Leaders can't activate other leaders, though, but it doesn't matter, because you don't need to activate Von Karstis in order for Von Karstis to give his bonus. Yep. So, Detail's being activated, because he has a range of four, so imagine he's got some kind of a, you know, submachine gun or something, because he's a hero. Uh, so you've got, a base, like a rifle. you've got a base of seven, plus one for the veterancy is eight, plus two for the leader is ten, plus one more for Detail is 11. Is that right? Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. 5 plus 2 is 7, plus 1 is 8, plus 1 is 9. So Deedle makes it 9, because you were firing at 8 before. Yep. So yep. 9, however, spray fire, if I recall correctly, requires boxed firepower. Or boxed it range. Does. Yeah, it does, and the rifles do have boxed range. Ah, so Deedle can't participate in this fire attack, however, because okay. he doesn't have boxed range. So you can instead just make it an 8, and it will attack both hexes. Uh, it, okay, yep, so it's, hang on, so, but I did play uh, plus 2 to oh, yes. attack as well. Oh, yes, plus 2 makes it plus a 10. 10, I'm sorry, I forgot, yep, you're at 10. So I roll one time for both? I think so. I'm going to say yes until I look it up and prove myself differently. Yeah, the team. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that's the playbook. It's not the rule book. What'd you get? Oh, wouldn't it be nice to have the initiative right now? That is too bad. So sad. Um, 13 is not so good. So let me look up the action here. Spray fire is a good one. All firing pieces must have box range. The two targeted hexes must be adjacent. Uh... Shh. 
Yep, it affects both hexes simultaneously. Only one fire attack roll is made. Boom. Okay, so now both okay. everybody here has to respond to a 13 firepower attack. The rifles are at 12, so they will roll and pass. The other uh, of uh, sorry, Sergeant Kovalev is at a 10, and he passes with a 15. The other rifles are at a 10, and they do not pass. Uh, wow. Ow. They break. All right. Woo. Damn. All right. Any other uh, action or orders for this turn? Uh, well, these guys. Uh, so can the guys in the south farmhouse with a range, range five? They can reach their broken squad, but if the line intersects the rifle squad, uh, the can they fire? Rifles, past yeah, rifles won't block line of sight. It's only terrain. All right. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna fire on them with those guys. Still. Okay. So that's a five minus one because it's going across a fence there. So it's actually four plus whatever you roll. Four plus nine. Uh, plus nine is thirteen. 13. I'm sitting at eight plus three. Ah, uh, I am going to pass the initiative to you and re-roll that. So it's eight plus eight is sixteen. So they pass. And a, sniper. Um, and a sniper. Now you can immediately pass the initiative back to me. Statistically, I don't think that is beneficial to you. Yep. Because so. you would need me to basically roll five or less, and I would have the initiative again, and I could pass it back again. Yep, yep. So right now That's you've fine. got the initiative. I saved my squad, but there's also a sniper event, which means nothing happens in the middle of the forest. Ooh. All right. Uh, any other orders? Uh, no. I'm just going to draw my cards. All right. Can we pretend for the sake of a demonstration that I have a uh, advance order in my hand? Sure. All right. So let's pretend that this is an advance order for the sake of demonstration. And I'm going to advance into melee right here. Blarg. So the way that this works is... You ignore all weapons in melee combat because weapons in this game are always things that are not useful in melee in like, you know, room to room fighting. Setting up a light machine gun or a heavy machine gun in a room to room fight is not going to happen. So uh, we ignore weapons completely. Not that there are any weapons. I'm just giving all the rules. Then I take my total firepower from all of my units, not weapons, and I add it to a attack roll. For example, it would be... Well, hang on. I'm skipping one step. The first step is... Who has ambush cards to play? I have ambush cards to play. Do you have any ambush cards to play? No, I do not. Okay. So, the my opponent must break one of their participating units. So, this is another aspect of card management. If you expect melee attack to come you might want to hang on to some a ambush actions in your hand. Problem is, the ambush actions are almost always on those very valuable fire actions. So it's difficult to yep. do. I've been saving this one up, hoping to get an advance, and so we're pretending that I have an advance for the purposes of this. So, you have to break one of your units. Here's where having detail is really nice. Yes. Because you can break, break him, detail. and it's no problem. So just right-click on him and choose break. What is this? Main function? No, status function. There you go. And he only lost one firepower. Good on him. So uh, now I played my thing. Now I would roll and add my uh, plus five. Uh, add my five firepower to whatever this is. It's a total of five. So I have a total of ten. Not looking good for the Russians. But you would take your five plus one for the veteran plus two for the leader, plus two for the leader's command value, and plus one for Deedle. So where does that leave us? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You've already beaten my roll. And just go ahead and roll your card. Yep. An eight. So you got 19. Now the loser of melee combat immediately loses everybody involved in the attack. Uh, in the fight. Uh. So boom, I lost my guy. But what if you had rolled really shitty... Or what if I had another ambush card? Then I could have potentially wiped out a huge stack with only risking one of my guys. And I'm the Russians. We've got plenty of guys. So yep. that is how you might do that 
you might attack such a fortified position as what you've got there if you have numerical superiority. You sit in the back with some of your guys trying to pin down the enemy, and if you can break them with that fire stack, then you try to get into melee if you have the advance and the ambushes ready to go. But that requires a lot of hand coordination because just leaving those cards in your hand is very valuable time you could be doing something else. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to... Uh, get some victory points for killing your guys, right? You are going to get some victory points for killing my guys. You are going to get two victory points for killing my squad. And that would be the end of my order. And I don't have any other useful things to do except play a move order and move these guys on the right-hand side a little bit. Uh, there. And there. And uh, there. I oh, it's frozen up on me again. <laughs> Stop freezing. Oh, what's a little trail thing through the woods? That allows you to move through it at one movement point instead of um, the two. two it normally costs if you're moving along the trail. Okay. So that's one, two, three, four. We're coming for you from the side now. Careful. All right. So... That actually might be a good place to uh, to stop the demonstration because I think we covered pretty much all aspects of what could happen in this scenario. So we can, you know, what we would continue doing here is we would then continue playing until the time track reached seven, or one of us managed to reach the surrender marker on our specific casualty tracks. So you had already killed one of my units. If you managed to kill off seven more, I would immediately surrender. If I managed to kill five of yours, you would immediately surrender. However, the hero, again, doesn't count for that track. He's well, uh, you're allowed to I throw him away. Well, have four squads, so, you know, if you, if you, if you do kill, like... Uh, you've got leaders, count. though. Leaders four count as units. Leaders. So one, yeah, four two, three, leaders. four, five, six. So te technically, if you have one unit slash leader left... That's when the uh, that's when that's when the stuff gets really that's rough. I, like, well, I, I guess I'm surrendering. I'm the only one left. Yeah, exactly. Or retreating, I guess, in that case, would be what was happening. So, that's how the game is played. And uh, the the cool thing about this, the thing that I love, is we've just played a pre-programmed scenario. It's, we've played one, this specific one that I have played about a gazillion times, but it's played out quite. You know, it's pretty differently. Now, a lot of people go straight to the center with the Germans, just like you did. And there's a couple of different ways to combat that. I could, like, run most of my units over to the right-hand side here and just leave a token force preventing you from crossing the field and then try to cross down here and get victory points that way. Or I could try a frontal assault, which is kind of what I set up here. Um, so there's a couple of different ways to get those victory points. Or I could say, hey, look, my hidden objective says that number four is worth four victory points. I don't think I want to even go near his side. My side's probably better. In this case, actually, mine said three was worth one victory point, so I needed to go and take that from you if I could. Now, yep. the victory point numbers for the objectives may not seem like much. Okay, five is worth one victory point. Three is worth one victory point. They can be two or three, maybe four or five. But remember, now that you have objective five, if I take it from you, you lose a victory point and I gain a victory point. So the objectives actually are doubled once your opponent controls them. If you manage to take an objective, you get a double point swing value. So an objective worth three points is actually worth six if your opponent is holding it. If you can take it, it's a six point swing. So that's a very significant number. Now the other reasons I really love this game is you not only have these pre-made scenarios that are based on historical events, you also have a, a, a random scenario generator, which starts by picking a map. One of, by the way, 12 maps with the base. If you just buy the Mediterranean expansion, that makes it 24 total maps. You can play each of these maps either the fat way, like we're playing it, it's 15 uh, hexes wide by 10 hexes tall, or you can be going east-west instead of north-south, where maybe I would start on the left-hand side and you would start on the right-hand side, and those are the sides where we're trying to push across. That is a completely different game than the one that we just played. The terrain plays out very differently if you're attacking left to right than top to bottom. So you have 24 maps, each of which can be oriented two different directions, and in each of those directions, one side can be attacking and the other side can be defending, or vice versa. If you imagine 
that uh, you were attacking me from the bottom of the map and I would set up, for example, my guys along this tree line here and then let's say you were down here in the attacker's position, usually defenders get to set up up to uh, some seven hexes into the territory so i might set up over here with maybe some foxholes let's see uh where do we have uh, uh a trench over here yeah let's do it let's let's see um oops i can't find the, the thing here because i scrolled down too far uh let's say i've got a trench here and a trench here and i put my guys in those trenches now i've got a whole fortified line here but that's very different than if I was attacking from the top of the map and you were defending. You'd be probably digging in really hard in the middle of this forest here and hoping that you could survive melee combat with me. That would actually be a very bad strategy for the Germans, but you get the idea. Now, you've got 24 maps being played one of two ways. Each of those two ways can be attacker or defender. Now multiply that by having a total of five different factions. The British, American, German, Italian, French, or six factions. I forgot the French um, <laughs> because they're, well, they're the French. Wait, wait, Bridget, Bridget can I ask you a question? Do the yes. French have lower morale? No, in fact, they have decent equipment and good morale, however. However, their leadership is terrible. And to represent that, if they want to discard from their hand, they have a one-card discard limit. If they get a handful of crap, it takes them turn after turn of discarding to clear their hand of crap in order to actually put together a hand that is <laughs> valuable to offense. To put that in perspective, if the Germans were on the attack and they had a six-card hand, they could spend one turn and discard their entire hand and get a brand new one. It would take the French six turns to do the same thing so that's designed to simulate the inefficiency of the French officer corps because they had well-trained soldiers and good equipment they just had extremely poor leadership which is what happened in World War II specifically so that is a great simulation of that fact that like I've so, got this crap that I have to deal with because my sub commanders won't listen so to my orders so for the British, is it like every time a British unit is about to break, substitute the broken unit with an Australian unit and break them? No, instead? but there are actually uh, Australian units. Uh, they have, let me see, the, um, oh no, they have Australian units represented in the Pacific version. They have the Anzac squads. Um, and they have territorial squads, actually. That's probably the closest. Territorial squads are representing uh, British uh, units that are coming from a one of their colonies, be it um, you know some South Africa or India or Australia, New Zealand, places like that. So territorial squads are there. But here's the cool thing. So look, look, let's look at the Americans here. Let's look at an American line squad and see how the the, the simple counters play very differently, not to mention the fact that the decks are very different. The German deck has very few jammed triggers because they had very good equipment. The Italian deck has extremely large amount of jammed triggers because their equipment was terrible. So here we go. Let's play, uh, let's let's throw the American counter here. Actually, I don't think you can see it. I might have lost connection to, uh, to you there. Are you still there? Uh-oh. Uh I'm back. There we go. There we go. I lost connection to server for some reason, but I'm showing the American uh, line team here has a morale of six, and on the other side, on the broken side, it has a morale of eight. What that's supposed to simulate is that the American squads in this fight were typically greener than everybody else. This was mostly untrained guys array arriving at D-Day. Not untrained, but un non-veteran units. They had been training for the last three or four years getting ready to invade Europe, but the Germans, on the other hand, and the Russians had been fighting for years and years. So as a result, you see the Americans have a six for morale. They're very easy to break. But when they do break, it's very unlikely that they actually took casualties and much more likely that they're just huddling down because they're green soldiers that can't deal with the fight. Now, that's not to say they don't have their elite squads or their airborne troops that are much more veteran than that. But the basic line unit, when compared with the basic German rifle squad, 
which actually gets worse when it breaks. Actually, it's the same when it breaks. But as in general, squads get worse when they break. Like the uh, like the Soviets start at eight and they break to six. And the Americans are the opposite. And the British, on the other hand, because they were pretty much stalwart all the way around, are seven and seven on both sides. Uh, so that's one of the ways that they function that. But, so, I mentioned the 24 maps, the two different ways to play, attacker versus defender, six factions. Now remember that the board is different based on the objectives that are drawn. The objectives that we had here were 5-3, and what was your objective? 5-3, uh, and my objective was 2 for 2 VP. So there you go. Now, if we had drawn different objectives, that would have made us behave differently. If we knew that, for example, objective three is worth three victory points, I might have gone more gung-ho to try and take the middle rather than sneak around and get exit victory points, because that would have been a big swing. So now you have the fact that every time you play a game, you randomly select victory conditions, essentially, and that those can be added to as the result of events. Not only that, not only that, but... If we play attacker and defender, for example, that is determined by the type of units that you buy. And it's a point buy system. So we'd both choose from these charts. And you don't have access to it because this is not something that they put on the, on the actual game uh, that we're playing here because they want you to buy the game. So you're not supposed to be able to play this version without at least one of us owning a copy of the game. Uh, but in this order of battle, there is basically we roll a year, and based on that year, we roll how uh, elite our units are. If you get elite units, then you're going to come with some paratroop units, some assault squads, some guards, for example, if you're the Russians, or some stormtroopers if you're the Germans. But if you roll green units, you're going to roll really crappy units that you're bringing to the field. But it's a point buy system. So if I roll a small green force against your elite uh, large force, then I basically start the game with a huge VP lead, and I have to try and hold you off. And I can buy defensive works with my victory points before the game starts. So if I, let's say you spend uh, 42 points on a massive elite army, and I spend uh, 16 points on my crappy green army, that's much smaller, uh, that's a differential of, let's see, um, doing the math is hard, 24 points. So I could spend a whole bunch of points, for example, uh, to buy some stuff. Here we go. I could spend uh, three points and get nine barbed wire, which make it much harder for you to cross the map. I could spend two points and get six foxholes to put wherever I want. That's how I could put my guys in the trenches over there, for example, because you get foxholes, trenches... Uh, or uh, trench lines or minefields or bunkers I could lock down this map with so much mines wire and bunkers that it would be hell for you to go through but as a result you'd probably take some artillery or mortars to try and knock my guys out of the bunkers so it's got all kinds of opportunities to play different kinds of fights and by the way this is one map let's take a look at the different v variations on the map here uh, if I uh, close this game and start a new one, I should be able to show you. Uh, yes, here we go. Let's pull up uh, a very different game. Uh, Commando School is, I believe, one that uses a lot of uh, buildings in an urban environment that allows you to see exactly how that works. Let's go into solitaire mode so we can move everything around. So here we go. Take a look at this. This is a very, very different fight than the one that we just fought. There's a lot of buildings. There's a lot going to be a lot of house-to-house -house fighting. There's hedges which block line of sight and provide cover. You can see the objectives are here, 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 here. And then there's one in the middle on this island. Uh, it, it can play so differently and so it's so much fun. Uh, and Kuro and I will probably stream an actual match the next time instead of us teaching. We'll actually be uh, playing against each other. We'll put it up on YouTube. It'll be a good time. Um, the island, yes, that's right. Uh, so that is basically it. Kuro, any other questions that you have? Uh, not particularly. I think you explained it quite well. All right, and if you guys have any questions, put them in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube here, and I'll try to answer them. Uh, you can also, um, you know, send me messages on YouTube or send me messages on Twitch. Subscribe to the Twitch channel if you enjoyed this, twitch.tv slash bridger15, and I guess we will call it end right there. Thanks, guys, for watching, and thank you, Curl, for helping me out. No problem. Thanks, guys.
And I had a lot of fun. Can't wait for the next time we play. Absolutely. We'll have to play a couple rounds before we actually get you on so, uh, so, so you can learn some more about uh, some of the less obvious things that are going on. All right? Yep, no problem. Lots of, lots of complexity in this. All right. Going to head to the meeting. See you guys oh, later. Oh, wait, wait. Bridger, Bridger, is the stream off? I am just about to turn it off. All right, guys. I need to uh, <laughs> discuss something with you. Okay, uh, TeamLegacy.net is our uh, gaming community that I'm a major part of. Check it out. We're doing a lot of stuff with MMOs, including Wildstar is our next big one. But we also play League and Team Fortress 2 on the side. Now I'm really logging out.